The scripture reading comes to us from the gospel account of St. Luke, the tenth chapter, beginning in the first verse. Hear now the word of the Lord. After this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter first, say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. The past several days have been overwhelming with your, with your love and generosity. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm used to a church providing like sandwiches on the day that we moved in. Y'all have provided sandwiches the day that we moved in and supper that night breakfast the next morning, and then supper for the next four nights. You did take the weekend off, but you're starting back on Tuesday, and I'm pretty sure I'm getting supper till like the 14th of July with different groups and Sunday school classes and individuals, and there's two things you need to know. Sincerely, thank you, and if you feed me, I will never leave. That's (laughs) how Melissa and I ended up getting married, is she made the mistake of feeding me, and I just kept showing up. You, you have sent cards and emails and texts and phone calls. I want you to know just how wonderful your staff is here. Uh, there's a, a lot of, of trepidation in a pastoral change. There's a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of confusion, a lot of hope, a lot of excitement. I mean, it's just this big jumble of emotions, right? And I know that some of you are nervous this morning about it. And let me sincerely say to you, you have absolutely nothing to be nervous about. I'm nervous enough for all of us. We got it. We've got that part covered. I know some of you are wondering what profound thing I'm going to say in my very first sermon, because let's face it, we can pretend, but y'all are sizing me up right now. You're already forming opinions, and some of you I'm losing because I can tell the joy has lost from your face. The choir told you about joy, and it was there, and then I started talking. But I do think I have something profound to say, something that's worthy to be tweeted or posted on your Facebook page, or at least written down. And here it is. I'm going to give it to you short and succinct right at the very beginning, so you've got this and you can remember it the rest of the time. A pastor's very first sermon in a new congregation is a lot like a blind date. I told y'all it was going to be profound. I can't remember the first time I ever heard that. I can't even remember who I heard it from, but I do remember when I heard it thinking, you're not wrong. Now let's Let's just, just go with me for a second. We both have a mutual friend. Our mutual friend is in the form of a district superintendent by the name of Reverend Dr. Rick Owen. So if you like today, that's who you need to contact and say, hey, good job. If you don't like today, that's who you need to contact and say, what have you done to us? Our mutual friend has spoken to our staff parish relations committee and our SPRC chairperson, Ms. Debbie, which, by the way, thank you so much for letting me call you 250, 300 times over the last few weeks. Our mutual friend has assured Ms. Debbie and our SPRC that I am a perfect fit for you. He has shared with them all of these wonderful things about me and told them all of the good stuff 
and that has hopefully filtered out to you as well over the past few months as we've been in this transition. Now what you may not know is our mutual friend is doing the same thing to me. He's giving me a call and he's sharing with me all of these wonderful things about you and all of this wonderful stuff about who you are and is assuring me that you are a perfect fit for me and we should really get together. And then the bishop banged her gavel on that last day of annual conference and let it be written, let it be done, there it is. But we both know that our mutual friend has not shared everything, that there's struggles that you have had and that you may be having now, maybe as a congregation, maybe individually or with your families, things that are happening across our nation, things that are happening across our denomination, and there's some questions that are there. Maybe you've got some questions like, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth or ideas in your head, but maybe you've got some questions like, well, I wonder if he's got the experience to come into a church this size. No, I don't. Let me go ahead and answer that. This was a jump that Evil Knievel couldn't make on Sunday with, with two months' notice. <laughs> Will he learn us? Yes, but you're going to have to give me time. There are a lot of you. There's more of you in here than lives in my hometown of Fruithurst, okay? And I realize all of you want me to come and meet your ministry, your Sunday school class, your group, your family, your whatever. I will, but you all can't be first, okay? We're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get there. There's a lot of you. I'm sure you may have some questions. Will it be able to understand our mission and our ministries? Will it be able to understand who we are uniquely called and equipped to be as Bluff Park United Methodist Church? Will he be able to speak with a family in crisis? Will he understand my situation? Will he be approachable? Someone that I might can turn to when I'm having a really awful, no good, very bad day. If you don't mind me summarizing, maybe the big question that you're asking is, will he love us? Will he act like he loves us? Will he genuinely love us, like, like Jesus says? Well, I got news for you. I've got some questions, too. My questions are, man, y'all don't transition senior pastors very well. And I'm grateful for that because the odds are in my favor, depending on how today goes. But you realize in the past 32 years, you've had two senior pastors. <laughs> You're a United Methodist Church where most of, most of us get two years if we don't like the preacher, four if we do, and five if the bishop is really in a good mood. Okay. So will they be open to me? Will they try to fit me into a mold that they've already got, that there's no way that I can live into? I can stand on Reed Crotty's footprints, but I can't fill his shoes. And Mike was here for nine years, and nobody can be like Mike. I don't care what the Nike commercial used to say. <laughs> Will they be open to my family? Because my family needs a church family. They're not a part of unpaid staff. It's not buy one, get three for free. Will they know that my son's name is Benjamin and my daughter's name is Robin and they're not just the preacher's kids? Will they know that my wife's name is Melissa and not the preacher's wife? She sings because she wants to sing, and she's got a gift for it if I am a little prejudiced. I mean, I know y'all sounded good before, but today. <laughs> and all I'm saying is, is there's one thing that's different, right? <laughs> Will they be open to trying new things that we discern together? I guess in short, I can summarize my fears and my questions into one sentence. Will they love us? And will they love me? And so we've got all of these emotions that are surrounding today, especially as we celebrate uh, independence of our nation in a time when it's really divided and there's all of this stuff that's going on and wham bam, we got a new senior preacher up here. What in the world do we do with all of this? And the more and more I started thinking about it, the more and more I started to realize that as much respect and as much genuine love as I have for Reverend Dr. Rick Owen, he is not our matchmaker. Jesus Christ is. 
In the passage of Scripture that we have shared together this morning, Jesus sent out 70 disciples. Now, I know he's got the 12, right, that he hand-called that were with him from day one and throughout the, the ascension and the glorious resurrection. But throughout Jesus' time, there were other disciples that joined in, and some of them stayed for a while, and some of them left. In fact, if you back up just a page in your Scripture, you'll see in the ninth chapter that Jesus preached a really hard sermon, and several disciples left. And following these things, he's got these 70 and he says, okay, guys, this is what we're doing. I'm sending you two by two into these towns and villages that I'm going to get to, but I want you to go ahead and go first. He didn't ask them whether the time was right. He didn't ask them what their schedules were like, if everything was okay with mama and dad, if, if, if they had everything tied up, if they got moved in yet, if they understood the assignment. He didn't ask them any of that things. He said, I'm sending you into these villages. And this is what you're going to do. Well, first he started with what you're not going to do. You're not going to bring a purse with you. You're not going to bring sandals with you. You're not going to carry any provisions. And you're not even going to greet people on the road. You're going to go in my authority and my authority alone. And if I'm sending you, I'm going to take care of you. And you're going to learn that today. And when you get into that village, I want you to go into the first house that you meet. Don't even knock on the door. Just walk right on in. And I want you to say, peace, peace be unto this house. And if peace is there, your peace will remain. And when it remains and you find your person, then you set up shop in that house. Don't you move from house to house. You eat whatever is set before you, whether it be according to the dietary law or not. You don't worry about it. You eat whatever they provide. And you proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God has come near. You cure the sick. You heal the lame. And you preach the good news that is to all people. And that's what they did. Now he told them that if they found a village that wasn't welcoming, then they'd just walk on out, shake the dust from their heels, and be on. But if we keep reading, we'll find out about the return of the 70. And when they returned, they were telling Jesus just absolutely how amazing it was. That it was beyond anything that they could understand or hope for or, or anything that they expected. Because they did in his name and by his power, they healed the sick and they saw the lame walk. And, and they preached the gospel and folks heard it and they received it. And 70 disciples come back praising God. They didn't know where they were being sent. They didn't really probably knew who they were being sent with, who they were called to do ministry with. Jesus just paired them up and sent them off. But that's okay because Jesus did. Jesus wasn't sending them where he wasn't going. You know, there's a phrase that I absolutely hate. We need to take the Lord to someone. Is he lost? No, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you are being called to go to, some, to go to someone or go somewhere, rest assured, Jesus is already there. You are being invited to join with Christ in the work that Christ is already doing, to be hands and feet where God is already. And he could send anybody that he wants to, but he wants you. That's the reason why he says it's not the harvest that's that's struggling. Guys, the harvest isn't struggling. It's authentic, genuine, get down in the trench with you, do life with you, sold out followers of Jesus Christ. That's kind of hard to find. When the cross is our mission and our only goal, then you can rest assured that God takes care of the rest. And what may seem like a really odd blind date is really something that maybe God ordained. Because before today, I knew of you, but I didn't know you. Melissa knew some of you, and I've already shared that story in the faith focus. I'll tell it again to you at a later time. But I didn't know you. And I guarantee you, you didn't know me. I'm just a nobody that the bishop sent. But the wonderful thing is, is that Jesus Christ knows you. And Jesus Christ knows me. 
and Jesus Christ has sent us together. And he has said, go into the village of Bluff Park and go into Pelham and go into Hoover, Broader, or Homewood, or Birmingham, or wherever it is this week takes you and proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God has come near. You know it. You've seen it. You've experienced it. Let's share it. And we just might discover that a blind date such as today or blind dates that we don't know about that we're going to have this next week, it might just not be such a blind date after all. In the name of the one who still sends us, in the great matchmaker, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us, and I hope that you found this message to be meaningful and life-giving. I look forward to you joining us next time, either on our live stream on Sunday mornings here at Bluff Park United Methodist Church. It's at 10 o'clock a.m. Or if you want to join us in person, you're welcome to do so also here at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. You can find out more about our church family, who we are, what we do, and how to get involved, as well as more information about our worship services at www.bluffparkumc.org. Hope you have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you next time.